the mannequin, mannequin challenge. You know, you just pause. Without moving or without doing anything. I think somebody one time said, this whole challenge, this whole um, mannequin challenge thing is nothing new. Because some of you have been um, standing around and not doing anything in your whole life. Invalid, basically. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. <laughs>
without any reason. Let me put it that way. Um, let me just put that down a bit. Hold on. Go down more. There we go. Let me put it down. Let me, let me say it that way. Um, you know what? Before I do that, let me just finish that, that part first. Okay? Many are lifelong invalids. Wow. Many are lifelong invalids who might be well if they only thought so. So, oh, hold on. Many imagine that every slight exposure will cause illness and the evil effect is produced because it is expected. Many die from disease, the cause of which is wholly imaginary. Ministry of Healing, page 241. So, first sentence. It's produced. This is produced. Um, it's not something that just comes out of the air and it attacks you. You actually make it yourself by your wrong habits, by your wrong doing, your wrong deeds, you know? Like, yes. Two. Two. Because it's by the imagination, you know? It's you. It's not outside, it's you. You are the problem causing or producing producing that disease yourself. Two, invalid. You know, um, there was that meme called, not the meme, I think, was it a meme? Was it a meme? But um, it was something about the... The, the, it was a challenge. It was the the mannequin, mannequin challenge. You know, you just pause. Without moving or without doing anything. I think somebody one time said, this whole challenge, this whole um, mannequin challenge thing is nothing new because some of you have been um, standing around I'm not doing anything in your whole life. Invalid, basically. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Invalid. And just because you're not exercising, you're not doing things about it, you're not working out, you're not taking the time to walk, to run, to do anything like this that are productive to the body, you as an invalid is causing yourself or producing into yourself disease. That's two. Three. Man. Ah. People have a hard time going outside, especially when they are sick. When you are sick, that's when you should be going outside, take some sunshine, not staying inside of your room. I mean, this is reverse psychology nowadays. We are teaching students psychology, but then they go out into the world, don't know how to actually apply it. When you are sick, you shouldn't be staying in your room into the air conditioner. No, you should go outside into the sun and take some sunlight. Because disease does not prevail in the sun. It prevails in areas that are um, covered, less sunshine, and that's why when I go to work, I keep my windows open so that the sunshine can actually come into the room. But some people, their room is always never touched by the sun because they have first they have the window they have the blinder and from the blinder they also have a, a big curtain that is dark like green dark green or gray so there is no sunshine coming in to the room even when it's cold like my friends and i on sunday we actually play soccer 
on Sunday night, afternoon, like 3 p.m. Even though it's cold, we still go out to play soccer. Why? Because it's good to do those things. But lastly, <laughs> the imaginary disease. I wonder how that works. <sighs> you know what? Yeah. Let's just let's just keep on going. Let's just keep on going. Let's move on. Electric power of brain vitalizes system. So you have a weak brain, then you for sure are not going to find any vitality in your system. That's how it works. Feel me? It's that simple. The influence of the mind on the body, as well as the body on the mind, should be emphasized. The electric power of the brain promoted by mental activity huh, vitalizes the whole system and is thus an invaluable aid in resisting disease. This should be made plain. I mean, it is pretty plain, but people are making it so hard to understand. The power of the will and the importance of self-control, both in the preservation and in the recovery of health, the depressing and even ruinous effect of anger, uh -oh, of anger, discontent, selfishness, or impurity, and even, and on the other hand, the marvelous life giving power to be found in cheerfulness, unselfishness, gratitude, should also be shown. Let me read to you that last part again, in case you didn't follow along. The power of the will, meaning of your mind, of your brain, and the importance of self-control. That is one of the set, one of the the fruit of the spirit. You know, it's love, joy, peace. You know, temperance, self-control, kindness, gentleness, faith. Yeah, one of them, self-control or temperance. Both in the preservation and in the recovery of health, the depressing and even ruinous effect of anger, discontent, selfishness, or impurity, and on the other hand, the marvelous life giving power to be found in cheerfulness, unselfishness, gratitude should also be shown. Education 197 and for those of you who have watched in my channel I did make a video on the book called Education. Wait did I? No I didn't. It was called Fund Foundations of Christian Education. I think that's a different book now. I'm gonna have to talk about that later on now. But if you also go to my book called Foundation of Christian Education you might find something in there that has to do with psychology as well. So, what do we have? Well, what I can say is, um, we need to do a better job. I mean, that, yeah, I can, that for sure, I, I can say that. We need to do a better job. You know, um, when 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 you when you are sick, or if you if you ever f think that you can get sick, the first thing you should do is put into your mind, nope, sickness, you gonna go away very quickly. I am not gonna tolerate you in my life. It's that simple. 
if we could just do this, If people simply understood how much power their brain has when it comes to combating disease, they will get sick less often. But of course, appetite, as I mentioned in the in one of my other video in the in the in the book called, in the chapter entitled "A Healthy Normality," which is part three, appetite. Appetite is making people's brain to shut down. Appetite. Temperance. They are intemperate. Oh. They are intemperate. So, we are to learn that your brain is something that is made to combat disease. Like, literally, to fight disease. If you could just believe it. You would, whew. if you could just believe it, you would have less disease coming into your life. And of course, if you take care of yourself, watch what you eat, even better. But people are not willing to do that because they want to have the gratification coming in. So, right, so, what did we learn today? You just learned what you should know about your brain so far. This was Mother Michelle. I hope to see you again. But don't forget to, of course, like and subscribe below. And hit that bell. And I will see you, hopefully, another time. But if I don't see you, um, I hope to see you then. When Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Now you're out.